What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, back to another video, and in today's video, we are with the E91 wagon. I have currently no updates with the Supra right now. It's been there honestly for a week. It is Friday, no, Saturday today. I dropped it off on Tuesday, so it's been almost a week it's been at the shop, but that's a good thing because technically, if you gave me a call sooner, it'll be, hey, Nor, I don't think I can actually fix this. You might need a new quarter, but the fact that it's taking longer means I think he already started fixing it, and he just needs to perfect it. This is my hypothesis. I'll keep you guys posted. For those of you guys who are not following me on Patreon, I'm going to keep Everyone on Patreon posted ASAP. Make sure you check out that first link down below. I have people hitting me up on Instagram all the time, like, what's going on? What's going on? If you guys follow me on my new Patreon page, I post all the updates on there as soon as I find out. So when the video drops, you guys know what to expect. But before we actually get into today's video, today's video is sponsored by Carly. For those of you guys who don't know, Carly's been a skinner I've been using for years. Literally, when I first got my first BMW, I purchased Carly and I absolutely love this skinner. I've been using them before we actually started partnering up together. It's literally been like four or five years that I've been using their scanners and this is their newer scanner that works with all cars it's no longer just a bmw scanner it works on my toyota supra my nissan titan literally anything it works with the scanner it's bluetooth connectivity and they just made it way better so for those guys who are longtime supporters you guys know that carly can code in custom features to your car um and also i mean obviously it diagnosed codes and things like that but what it can also do is code in your new batteries code out code in functions like all that stuff on bmws is super 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 cool and I remember I used to be the guy that takes my cars to BMW whenever I put in a brand new battery because if you don't program the new battery, the, the car is going to drain the new battery. And uh, every time I take it out of BMW for them to code in the new battery, it's like $120, I think $180 just to code it in. And we all know what they do. They literally just plug in their computer and click one button. And that's what Carly can also do. And guys, the codes are right over here. Now, the nice thing about Carly, you don't need to have a check engine light for it to tell you all your issues with your car. So as you guys can see, we have 11 airbag issues. We have four car access system issues. And it tells you and it kind of ranks it to how bad they are. We have 33 issues in total, which again, most scanners won't actually tell you how many issues you have in total. And just looking at this dashboard, we only have two airbag lights. You wouldn't assume we have 33 issues, but we do. As you guys know, this car was involved in an accident. We replaced the seat buckles, we replaced the seat belts, we replaced the curtain airbags. Um, so honestly, once we clear the lights, this hopefully, this number right over here, the 11 should go down and we'll find out a little bit. These are hard codes, airbag codes will not just go away on its own. So you will need to clear it and the ones that come back are the ones you have to still deal with. But if you go ahead and click on the car access system, for example, it'll tell you the antenna on the passenger door is disconnected. So that, that was actually something we had to disconnect ourselves when we removed the rocker panel on the side. So that's super nice how specific this one is. And just in case you guys don't actually understand that code or that description, you can go ahead and click search more info and it takes you straight to Google where you guys can just read up on forms and other people, what they did to fix the issue as well. So it's super cool. And again, since it's Bluetooth, it's connected to your phone, it makes life so much easier. Let's go ahead and clear the code to see how many of those airbag lights come back because we did fix a lot of them. And guys, just like that, we're down to 11 issues and only nine in the airbag category, which is a super good sign. So as you guys can see over here, we have a bunch of like not serious codes which basically means that probably all these will get solved by fixing the major issue. And the major issue is saying airbag sensor B pillar. So this is our A pillar and our B pillar is back here. B pillar right side. So this is our right side. And I disconnected the sensor right down there for the airbags, like I said, because the whole quarter panel is kind of dented in. I don't want the airbags to randomly deploy. So that's the last code that we have for the airbag. Hopefully once we get that situated, we will have no airbag lights and hopefully all the rest of the stuff will clear. We'll only know once we actually fix this major issue but i love how carly can categorize how serious each code is because there's a lot of code readers that throw all these codes they're like oh my god what should i do to fix it this one will tell you hey focus on this one and the rest of these might actually just disappear with this code because this code could be causing all of it we are so 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 close guys to getting this thing with zero lights on the dash and even though this is a sponsored ad the carly scanner is absolutely amazing and i used that for this entire build so far so make sure to check out that first link down below for those of you guys who have always been asking me nor uh is there a discount code yes finally guys got a discount code for Carly for you guys. Again, check out that link down below. Um, you guys will probably tell that my face is a little bit different, the settings and everything. This is a brand new camera that I just picked up. Pretty much a really high quality camera. I never actually spent this much money on a camera before, but I figured, hey, you know, it's new nor new year. I need to step up the quality and I feel like this is pretty nice. Let me know if you guys do like this camera settings or not. If not, you know, I could change that up. If you guys like to see my natural acne uh, face, I think, I think it's making me look good. I don't know what's going on, but 
or maybe I'm still ugly. I don't know. But yeah, for now, I'm actually gonna start removing a lot of the things that we're gonna be reusing, putting it onto our storage racks. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I brought, I put brand new storage racks on both sides um, to get this pretty much project started. I mean, I need space to start storing some parts that are gonna be reusing, and then the parts that we're not gonna be reusing, I'm either gonna put in the backyard or put it up on eBay or whatever. I mean, obviously everything, honestly, on this car has gotta go. From high demand in the last video, you guys pretty much said you wanna say E91 M3 build. And honestly, that's something I wanted to do. It is gonna be kind of more expensive than an N54. N54 is probably gonna be a whole lot cheaper, um, just because of the fact that, you know, you can pick up an N54 for like 3K and then swap everything over. And if you need to do any conversions, you know, I could probably keep this build under like five or 6K if I pick up a 335, especially an all wheel drive version. It'd be so much easier. The reality is I've actually seen a lot of 335 wagons and I haven't seen much E91 wagons. So even if I have to spend 15 to 20 Gs to get an E91 M3 wagon, I think is a really good deal. And the reason why that still sounds kind of cheap is because you guys know, I bought this car for 1200 bucks. I'm actually gonna be showing you guys the full breakdown of how much everything I'm gonna, I'm, like, I'm gonna be selling a bunch of parts of this car. And I'm gonna show you guys the breakdown of parting out a car as well of the cost to actually build an E91 M3. I'm gonna be buying a donor car. I need to find a donor car, buy one. I need the whole car because if you guys buy the individual parts, it's gonna rack up real quick. The engine alone on eBay is like eight to nine thousand dollars. So for an M3 motor alone, without all the cables, wiring harnesses, transmission, anything, it's gonna add up real quick. So we're gonna go buy a totaled car, preferably from the rear end, because we we have our rear end. We want to keep it the wagon. We can get those for as little as ten Gs. We have the entire car, including all the panels and everything. So that is the goal. We're gonna try to find one. It's gonna be kind of tough to be honest. But in the meantime, until we find that, we might as well get this thing stripped up, ready to go. But I think we're gonna start removing everything off the front end, just so we're ready need to actually remove the motor if we need to the next couple of days. So then I'm my boy Arlon, he does motor swaps all the time. He removes motors, things like that. He's way more advanced and skilled when it comes to stuff like that. And I want him to teach me and so I can get into this kind of stuff because honestly guys, doing creative builds like this really does drive me. I'm really, really, really excited to do a creative, unique build like this. This is just something that like really, really, really like motivates me to get inside the garage and start building. So I think an E91 M3 would be absolutely insane. I don't know if I can do it, but um, the goal is, is, to, is to make it happen, guys. Just to absolutely make it happen. And I'm gonna start taking this thing apart in my garage and I have no choice but to make it happen. So for those of you guys who want to see an E91 M3 become a reality, please smash that like button to just show me that you guys are interested in a build like that. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and probably start just pulling things off the front end. All right, guys, so we finally have the car in all four jack stands, mainly because I want to get the cats out of this car. I want to get the exhaust out of this car. The cats alone on this car is worth $700. We got this car for $1,200. So honestly, dismantlers make a lot of money just off the cats alone. So the goal is to remove the catalytic converters, remove the exhaust, remove as much parts that are actually worth some good money, sell those parts, and put the funding towards the M3 projects. So we got this for $1,200. I definitely guarantee we can make $1,200 off the parts. I'm hoping to actually make towards three to four grand off parts if we're smart doing it so we can actually take three of those thousand dollars actually and put it towards the m3 i think it'd be super 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 sick to get a donor car for really cheap and have this build like under like 10 g's like how sick would it be to even e91 m3 for under ten thousand dollars that is the goal obviously it's gonna be very difficult to do i actually have a bigger budget in mind for this car but if we can get it the cheapest e91 m3 ever built i think it'll be absolutely insane and then dumping that extra funding that we have on making crazy suspension crazy wheels and crazy car and fiber absolutely everyone just make this thing look insane let's go ahead and just take off as much parts as we can that's probably worth the most amount of money so we can just start getting some of that money so we can try to get an m3 
And just like that, guys, about, I would just say about an hour later, we got the V-brace out. We got all the brackets to hold the exhaust in there. And we pretty much removed the entire exhaust. The only part of the exhaust that's left in there um, is the headers, which connect to the cats. On 328s, I believe the headers and the cats are one piece, um, unlike 335s and stuff. 335s, the header and the cat are two separate pieces. Um, but yeah, on this car, it's one piece. It'd probably be easy to pull out the primary cats when we pull out the engine. Um, so I'm just not even going to deal with that right now. But as for this, guys, we got the two cats out right there. We have the entire exhaust out right here this is gonna go up for sale probably for like a hundred bucks something like that for the resonating muffler the whole thing right here as far as the cats guys these bad boys right here these little guys right over here try to show you guys the part numbers on these guys as long as they are good which as long as the honeycomb in there is not like cracked or anything I don't know if you guys can see in there but yeah as long as the honeycomb is not cracked right there that looks super good that basically means that we can get about 150 to 200 dollars per piece on these little guys and then the two big ones about 300 dollars a piece two 50 to 300 so these are some pretty good money i didn't think cats are worth that much i used to honestly junk my cars at pick and pull and leave the cats in there um you live and you learn guys so don't junk your cars if you still have your cats cats are worth a dummy lot of money take out the cats send the car to pick and pull obviously that's not what we're doing with this car we're going to fully build it but we're going to put the cats from our m3 into this car so these ones we just don't need them We finally got off the hood. We got off the bumper. We got off the cowls. Again, all this stuff is for sale for dummy cheap. Like this hood, complete. I'll give it for 50 bucks. Bumper, complete. 50 bucks. Fog guys and everything. This stuff right here, the cowl, 50 bucks for everything. The wheels, honestly, all four. They got good tires on them. The only uh, tire that actually has some issues would be this guy right here. It actually got a little bit shredded from the side. It's perfectly fine though. It's still, it still holds air and everything's still good. It's just kind of ugly. I think I'm going to do this set for like 150. Again, I'm just selling everything super cheap because I want to get rid of it all. But the wheels, the reason I'm asking 150 at least not like 50 bucks or something is because honestly i'd rather just keep these as spares so you can kind of move the car around I and mean, if i don't get like 154 but if i get 150 um good set of rims and tires with tpms sensors and everything so again local pickup on all this stuff just because they're kind of big hey guys we got pretty much a lot of stuff off the car so far um so the reason why this actually got a salvage title was was because of a hit on this side not because of that entire side swipe this side swipe happened without the actually insurance actually knowing so uh this was like behind the scenes it's not the reason why i got totaled out it would have definitely got totaled out because it's like this but it actually got totaled out because of a hit right over here um as you guys can see really really poor job of repair like i don't even know how it passed inspection look at this as well they just pretty much use some kind of like epoxy or like something and just kind of glue everything together. So this headlight, honestly, I'm just gonna take off all the modules and just sell the modules. I'm not even gonna sell this headlight. Probably even just sell the bracket as well. This headlight actually is perfectly fine. Just needs to be sanded down from the outside. So a complete headlight over here. And actually I have another complete headlight that I got off a of pickup pole. So technically I have a set that I'm gonna be selling together. Probably like, honestly, maybe like a hundred bucks, 150 for two complete adaptive headlights for the E90. That's a killer deal. Again, like these go on eBay for like 200 to 300 bucks complete. I'm going to do literally both of them for like 100, 150 bucks. But anyways, let's just keep taking the whole front end apart because um, we have so much more things to take off.
and just like that we have pretty much everything off in terms of the front end we have the front wheel guards the front radiator support the bumper the wheels everything's pretty much off of the car the next couple of things is honestly going to get a little bit messy like the coolant the oil we might have to do that in either in the next video just because it's going to be a lot of like stuff that I have to remove for example like this guy drain it drain it drain it drain it oil drain it we got a lot of things we got to drain um including possibly even brake fluid so we have a lot of stuff that we have to drain so probably not going to be in this video but we did remove a lot of things in this car from the exhaust system to the whole front clip even i'm actually going to remove the all the wheels finish up the rest of the wheels i'm getting a little bit hungry right now and since i'm fasting it's going to be really hard for me to actually keep going forward with this so i am going to be cutting it a break either i'm going to go do this tomorrow or i'm going to release this video for you guys so at least you guys kind of get an update but yeah guys oh man this is a lot of stuff over here i'm going to go ahead and get a thumbnail while i have all this stuff outside the car and then probably remove the, the two rear wheels and then honestly just call it a day again this is the month for me that i am fasting i cannot wait one more week and that's the end of that and i no longer have to fast and i can put my full energy into it we can go do our chipotle runs and all that good stuff man i miss chipotle we haven't been there we haven't done a chipotle run on this channel for a while now so we're definitely gonna be doing a chipotle runs uh, on this build many many times but in the meantime uh your man's out of energy i can't drink water i can't eat food it's been a couple hours i mean when i say a couple i mean like six seven hours so i don't want to pass out if y'all feel me. any hizzles any hizzles i'm probably actually gonna remove a couple more things later in this video so you guys will see that like for example the door regulator stuff like that because i actually have someone that wants to come buy that stuff asap so I might as well strip that stuff down, but at least that stuff is inside the garage working on the front end where the sun's hitting me um, It's a little rough. I'm not gonna lie So I'm happy to say guys we've got everything cleaned up in the garage at this point um, I'm ready to remove the driver's door So now that everything's moved out of the way we can actually try to remove this door It should be only like like four screws uh, I'm gonna try to remove the two that are on the door um, and on both sides and there should be one connector right there And that bolt right here and this whole door should come off this door um, There's kind of a little bit of a situation here because um, there's no door handle and it doesn't want to open from the inside unfortunately, which really sucks I'm gonna try to figure out where to get this door off and actually this car this door has some parts that are worth taking off For example, this glass piece is worth a lot of money because it's only on the wagons um, And they're very hard to come by now. I know this is gonna be probably hard to remove um, So I'll try my best to remove it. If not, I break it, it is what it is. Um, this one's also worth some money I believe it's only for the E91 wagons same goes with this piece um, The door panel actually has the sun visor in there for a sun visor retrofit so that's kind of cool. I'm probably gonna actually remove the sun visor portion out of the door card and retrofit it into an M3 interior so we can kind of keep all these OEM sunshade mods because this is a wagon. I want to keep all the attributes that make it a wagon. I think it's gonna be super sick. And thankfully, those pieces are in black. So once I get like black headliner, black carpets, black dash, black or whatever, they, I hope we can get like red interior or something super nice for this interior for the M3. The goal is to try to pick up an E90 sedan because the E90 sedan shares the front carpets, the rear mid carpets. Um, all the pillars are the same, the seats are the same, all the door panels are the same. Um, I believe the rear seats are a little bit different, but other than that, guys, the E90 shares so, so, so much, and I'm really hoping we can kind of get an E90 M3, because also the side skirts from an E90 M3 would fit on this. The quarters would be, actually, I have to get an E90 M3 because the quarters are uh, from E90 M3. So um, the goal is to try to find an E90 M3. If there's anyone local to you guys selling an E90 M3 that's not totaled from the front end, there is someone local to me in San Jose that has an M3 that's totaled really badly in the front end. Um, my issue is I need everything from the front end and unfortunately it's the front end and the driver's side all scraped up so I need everything from the driver's side as well I need something that's either rear-ended or even in the even if the, this door is damaged on M3 I don't care I don't even care if it's smashed halfway I really just need the front end and the transmission but in the meantime our goal is to try to make as much money off these parts as possible so when the M3 hits the market we'll be able to afford it and like I said guys I will be doing a full breakdown of how much I got this car and how much I sold everything and how much picked up the M3 and what we sold off the M3 so I'll show you guys the ultimate cost to build an E91 M3 and I'll show you guys obviously the full process. So uh, yeah, wish me luck.
And guys, this is what we got out of the door. We got some buttons right over here. We got a window regulator that's actually in good working condition. I'm actually gonna keep that window regulator because I have so many e chassis and eventually these window regulators just tend to go bad. I have an extra glass window, which I mean, typically those take forever to sell. So I'll probably just end up giving it away to someone that actually needs it. I ended up taking out the entire door harness the same way I did it on the Supra. Reason being is that this is actually a comfort access car. So if we get a door that's not with comfort access, we want the comfort access to work. So we got the harness with the comfort access feature right there. So we're gonna be putting that onto our donor door. That's gonna be put onto this car. And then we actually have this guy right here, which I already have a buyer for. He wants to give me like 30 bucks for this bad boy. Keyless entry door handle. I'm um, not really sure if that's really worth much. This I'm gonna keep it with the rest of the wood trim sets. I saw the whole trim set on eBay. These actually go quickly for like 20 bucks. Nothing too crazy, but hey, like I said, guys, we're gonna just, we're just gonna try to add up and see how much money we can make off the little things. Um, these speakers seem like they're Logic 7 speakers. So these Logic 7 speakers are probably worth something. And this right here is the key to the front door so I'm gonna be keeping every single thing on this car that has a key shape on it because we're gonna be selling it as the entire thing with the cast module and the keys and everything that entire set alone is worth like three to four hundred dollars on eBay if you have all the keys like for example the key goes into the glove box the key goes into here um, I think that's pretty much it where the key goes into uh, the ignition the cast module the, the key itself all that kind of stuff we bundled all together that is a complete key access system for somebody that has a fry key access system so yeah we're pretty much just taking off all the things that have any sense of value to it and stuff like this. Honestly, I'm probably not gonna need it. I'm just gonna end up throwing it out. I just took it off the door anyways. But yeah, anyways, um, I'll get back to you guys once I got everything cleaned up and packaged up so I can put it all away. So what I've been doing is I've been cleaning the products, wrapping it up with this kind of stuff and I've been putting it up on my eBay store just so I can kind of get things organized out of the little things like PDC sensors, windshield washer stuff, uh, modules in here. Um, I have like horns um, and like speakers and stuff like that in here. And then I have like more of the bigger things over here like the, the full trim. I have this full trim from another car. I don't know how I have that, but I have it. Uh, a bunch of other stuff on my eBay page. If you guys wanna check out my eBay page, you guys want some cheap parts, make sure to check it out down below. But yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and clean up everything, post it up on eBay, and I'll get back to y'all hopefully when I'm all cleaned up. And this is the next morning, guys. We have the car just chilling here like a villain. I don't know if you guys can notice over there. Actually, let me just show y'all. So as you guys know, we moved the whole front end on this car, removed the door on the driver's side as well, fully stripped it down. So that was actually something that was damaged on the car, so getting rid of it was just gonna be a plus. Um, we also need to get rid of that front Fender, just junk that fender um, as well as this door. I actually found a door and I bought it locally on eBay. The seller's not getting back to me for the pickup date, but we did order a door. So thank the Lord, it was super hard to find a door. And actually just thankfully there was one locally so I didn't have to pay shipping on it. As far as the interior goes, I actually started removing some of this stuff off camera like the navigation screen, the unit right there, uh, the trim, the iDrive control, and the center trim. Reason being is because somebody actually came over and wanted to look at all three of those. He actually just bought the CCC by itself. I actually have another CCC, so I'm actually gonna pair it up with all of this and probably sell all together. I was only asking like 120 for the CCC. Um, I still have another one. I'll probably end up selling like the CCC with this and this uh, for probably like 150 or something like that. I even got off all the trim pieces. I cleaned them all up, but I haven't really wrapped it all up yet and packaged these up just because we still need to remove the other ones from the other doors. But yeah, I mean, everything's really coming together. I'm keeping everything kind of organized and putting everything up on eBay. I'm trying to show you guys how much you can actually possibly make parting out a car. Um, just, you know, if you guys want to part out a car. I'm parting out a car, but also on the mission, obviously, to build a car. But I really want to see the true cost of how much it's going to cost me to transform this into an E91 M3. How much I bought the car for, how much I sold the parts off of it, how much I get an E90 M3 for, and how much I make off of parts off that car for parts I don't need, if there's going to be anything, really. I mean, I think I have to use everything, honestly. But yeah, with every great build, end of the day, we always want to know how much it costs us. Because if it costs too much, you know, you live and you learn. But if it didn't cost too much, more projects to come. Anyways, guys, that is gonna have to conclude the video. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, also, I started a Patreon. Link's gonna be down below. The reason I'm promoting it heavily right now is because the first 14 days since I launched it, I believe there's nine days left or 10 days left, um, everyone that signs up, whether you sign up for $3 a month or for whatever package you guys wanna sign up for to see the behind the scenes on this channel, um, you guys will get a free keychain, absolutely for free, mailed out, free shipping, like no questions. Even if you wanna just sign up for one month for $3 and just dip out the next month, I hope you guys do stay, but if you guys do want to just sign up for a free keychain, link's going to be down below. As you guys know, YouTube honestly does not pay that well. I showed you guys how much I actually make off of YouTube, and people really just don't believe YouTubers when they say this. YouTube doesn't pay much. I make less I make less off of YouTube than I do with some of my partners that I work with. YouTube honestly does not pay 
like good at all anymore. I don't know, they used to pay somewhat decent, but recently it's just been really, really, really bad. Um, so if you guys wanna support the channel, so just check out that link down below. But without further ado guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.